Hi, in this short video, we're going to learn about intervals and interval notation. An interval is a connected subset of the real line. For example, the entire number line, that is the set of all real numbers, is an example of an interval. You could also have half a line. It would start at a spe specific number and then go all the way to the left forever, or you could go all the way to the right forever. Finally, we could also have a bounded interval, an interval with a fixed left endpoint and a fixed right endpoint. Now, even bounded intervals contain an infinite number of numbers. Uh, there's no way that we could represent an interval by trying to write out all of the numbers that it contains. So how can we describe an interval? Well, there are at least three ways. One way is called set builder notation. In set builder notation, we use braces to enclose a description of the set. So typically you start with a variable followed by a short vertical line, which is called a pipe or a bar, and you read that as such that. After the bar, you have a description, which could be an inequality or some other kind of phrase which describes the numbers in the set. In this case, we would read this as x such that x is less than 3. As we already saw, another way you can represent an interval is by shading a portion of the number line. What we didn't discuss is what do we do about the endpoint? Because we need to know whether the endpoint belongs to the interval or if it's not included in the interval. We use either a rounded parenthesis to say that the endpoint does not belong to the interval or we'll use a square bracket to show that the endpoint is part of the interval. The most compact way of representing an interval is to use interval notation. It is a short way of writing all of the information needed from the number line. If you have a bounded interval, in interval notation, you're going to write the left endpoint, followed by a comma, followed by the right endpoint. And we'll use the same symbols to indicate whether or not the endpoint belongs to the interval. That is, we'll use a rounded parentheses to indicate that the endpoint does not belong to the interval, or we'll use a square bracket to show that the endpoint belongs to the interval. If the interval is not bounded, for example, if the interval continues in the positive direction without bound, then in place of the right endpoint, we would use the infinity symbol. On the other hand, if there is no left endpoint because the set continues in the negative direction without bound, we would use the negative infinity symbol in place of the left endpoint. Now, infinity is not a number. There's no way that you can say infinity belongs to a set of numbers. And so we never uh, consider infinity in the interval, so we always use a rounded parentheses, whether we're using positive infinity or negative infinity. There are two special cases which are worth mentioning. The first special case is when the interval consists of a single number. It looks a little strange if we try to represent that on a number line using an open bracket and then another closed bracket on top of the open bracket. So generally in that case, we'll just use a solid 
circle or dot on top of the number which belongs to the interval. It's actually quite easy to represent it in interval notation because the left endpoint is the same as the right endpoint. So the regular interval notation uh, works out fine when there's only one point. Of course, you have to use the square brackets. The other special case is uh, when the interval is the entire real number line. Uh, and in that case, we're just going to use uh, negative infinity in place of the left endpoint, infinity in, in place of the right endpoint, of course, we enclose that in rounded parentheses. Now, two important types of intervals are open and closed. In an open interval, we do not include the endpoints. So that means that there is no leftmost number or rightmost number in an open interval because no matter what number you choose, you can always find numbers in the interval to the left of that chosen number or to the right of the chosen number. When we write open sets in interval notation, we're always going to be using rounded parentheses. A closed interval does include its endpoints. Again, since infinity or negative infinity, those are not numbers, can never be included in the interval. That says that if you have a closed set it must be bounded. The closed uh, interval will have a leftmost number, the left endpoint. It will have a rightmost number, the right endpoint. When we write closed intervals using interval notation, we will start with a open square bracket and close with a cl close square bracket. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short video on intervals and interval notation.